So this is a mixed integration practice. This is a worksheet in your canvas that has a bunch of different types of uh, integration techniques all mixed together on one sheet. So I'm going to run through this and talk about how I choose which one to be which and um, hopefully this will be helpful to you. So on this first one, uh, my first thought when I see fractions is I hope that it's um, going to be u sub with a du over u. And you can see the difference between 1 and 2. So in 1, there's a 5x on top. That's roughly the derivative of x squared plus 5. So this one, I would just do u equals x squared plus 5 and du equals 2x. So then my integral would be du over u, but of course it has a 2 that I don't want, and it doesn't have a 5, so I'd have to put a 5 over 2 out front. And that, of course, integrates to 5 halves natural log u plus c, which would be 5 halves, oops, sorry, which would be 5 halves natural log of x squared plus 5 plus c. So that's a that's a nice one. Now this one, the problem with number one is there's the derivative of x squared is 2x and we don't have an x on top. So that is the clue that I can't use u substitution here. So I have to use something else. Um, can't use partial fraction because it is a um, it's a the bottom isn't factorable. So that leaves us with either um, trig substitution, or if you recognize that this is um, very similar to the derivative of arctangent. So if you look on the sheet, so if you look on this sheet, you can see that the derivative of arctangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. But the problem is we have um, x squared plus 5, not x squared plus 1. So if we make a little adjustment, we could change this to, of course, we could take the 5 up front, so we don't have to worry about that. So then we have a 1 on top like we want, dx. If we divide everything by 5, um, this becomes x squared over 5 plus 1. And there's a 5 out here. So those two 5s cancel out. Okay, so then we're going to rewrite this as the integral of 1 over, so the dx up front, change this to x over the square root of 5 squared plus 1. So now if we think of x over 5, oops, x over 5 as u, then du is just 1 fifth dx. So then um, this is really the integral of 1 du over u squared plus 1. And then that is exactly the derivative of arctangent. But of course, the 1 fifth brings in, or the du brings in an extra, oops, that's the du. The du brings in an extra 1 fifth that we don't want, so we need to put a 5 out front here. So then that would just be 5 arc tan u plus c, but of course u is x over 5, so that would just be arctan of x over 5. Okay, so that would be if you recognize that it looks like arc, the derivative of arctangent. If you don't, you, we can do this using trig substitution, so let me do it that way. So I'm going to just erase this, do this all on video. And if I if I do arctan, I mean, I'm sorry. If I do trig substitution, I'm going to um, let x equal um, the square root of five tan x, which means dx is equal to I mean, sorry, square root of tan theta, which means dx is equal to square root of five secant squared theta. 
d theta. So then my integral is going to be 5 times the square root of 5 secant squared theta d theta. And then on the bottom, I will have 5 tan squared theta plus 5. Okay, so then we um, can factor out a 5 and actually cancel at the top. So we have the integral of uh, square root of 5 secant squared theta d theta on top and tan squared theta plus 1 on the bottom. Oops. And we can, of course, we quickly notice that um, tan squared plus 1, that's just science, secant squared. So then we have the integral of square root of 5, secant squared theta, d theta, over secant squared theta. Of course, those will cancel out, and I'm left with the square root of the square root of, I mean, the integral of square root of 5, d theta, which is equal to square root of 5 theta. Um, plus c, of course. And we need to know what theta is, so we go back up to this equation and divide both sides by square root of 5, and we get x over the square root of 5. And um, then we take the tangent, inverse tangent of both sides, Right, so that'd be equal to tangent theta. Then we take the inverse tangent of both sides and we get that arc tan of x over the square root of 5 is equal to theta. So then um, we just sub back in and we get square root of 5, square root of 5 times the tangent, uh, or sorry, times the arctangent of x over the square root of 5 plus c. All right, so there's uh, two different looks at that same problem. Let's go back, let's go on. So the next one, so this one is uh, x squared e to the 6x, um, because x squared is not the derivative of 6x. This is not a uh, u substitution. This is a clear integration by parts problem. So we would let u equal x squared and um, dv equal e to the 6x dx. Then du would be 2x dx, and v would be one sixth e to the six x. So then we're going to get um, uv, which would be one sixth x squared times e to the six x minus the integral of v du, and that would be one third because the two and the one sixth will cancel with each other. X times e to the six x dx. And because there's still an x in there, we want to do one more iteration of um, integration by parts. So this time, I'm going to let u equal um, x. Well, I guess I'll do one third x. Then du is just one third dx. I'll let dv equal again e to the six x dx, which means v is equal to one sixth e to the 6x. So then we got 1 6 x squared e to the 6x minus, and I'm going to put prints around that because I don't want to mess up the minus part. Um, uv would be 1 18th x e to the 6x minus the integral of v du, which would be 1 18th 
um, e to the 6x, and this time it's just dx. So again, 1 18th is the 1 3rd times the 1 6th in these two. Okay, and then finally I'm going to integrate that and then apply the negatives. So that would be 1 6th x squared e to the 6x minus 1 18th x e to the 6x. And then this would be minus a negative, which would be plus, and that would be 1 over, let's see, that'd be e to the 6x. We'd have to take out, an, it's going to kick out another 6, so we got to get rid of that. So 6 times 18 would be 60 plus 48 is 108. So that'd be 108 right there, and then plus c. So there's a classic integration by parts, and speaking of which, here's another classic integration by parts, because I have L and X mixed with the power, and this is the one where we want U to be L and X, so therefore DU is 1 over X dx, and then DV would have to be X cubed dx, and that makes V equal to 1 fourth X to the fourth. So then we're going to get uv, which would be 1 fourth ln x, or I'm sorry, 1 fourth x to the fourth ln x minus the integral of v du. Now here's the beauty of ln x and integration by parts. Notice the 1 over x and the x to the fourth will cancel each other, leaving me with a 1 fourth x to the third dx. So then when I integrate that I get 1 fourth x to the fourth ln x minus that would be x to the fourth and this would have to be 1 over 16 plus c. Okay so whoops let's see moved with it <laughs> that's funny. So okay now on number five I'm going to this is another fraction one that I hope is u substitution, but it's not because one is not a, a derivative of x squared. But in this one, the um, the bottom is factorable. So you're going to break away from the integral and you're going to write this as x minus 2, x plus 2. So you're going to factor it. And remember, if, it's, if we're doing partial fraction decomposition, this would be... Um, equal to a over x minus 2 plus b over x plus 2. And then we want to multiply both sides by the common denominator. So that would give me 1 is equal to a times x minus, or excuse me, x plus 2 plus b times x minus 2. And <clears throat> that means that uh, 1 is equal to ax plus bx plus 2a minus 2b. So this right here tells me that 0 has to be equal to a plus b because there's no x's over on this side, which means that a is equal to the opposite of b. And then these two tell me that um, 2a minus 2b has to be equal to 1. So if we replace um, a with negative b, that would be negative 2b minus 2b has to be equal to 1, which means negative 4b is equal to 1, which means b is equal to negative 1 fourth, and that makes a equal to 1 fourth. Okay, so then if we go back up here and try to integrate this, so that means this thing is equal to the integral of... 1 fourth over x minus 2 dx la 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 minus the integral of 1 fourth over x plus 2 dx. And that, of course, is just going to be equal to the natural, or no, 1 fourth. The natural log of x minus 2 minus 1 fourth the natural log of x plus 2 plus c. Well, it's pretty slick. 
All righty. Uh, number six is another one that we is not going to work out for u substitution. It's not factorable, so this is going to have to be a um, integration or trig substitution. And since it's something plus x squared, we immediately think that x has got to be 3 tan x, which means dx is equal to 3 secant squared x. I'm sorry, I keep calling that x should be theta. Tan theta secant squared theta d theta. Um, and so then when we make the substitution, we get the integral of 3 secant squared theta d theta on top because of the dx. On the bottom, we have the square root of 9 plus 9 tangent squared theta. And that, if we factor out the 9 and take out the square root, that's a 3, and I'll cancel that. So we end up with the integral of secant squared theta d theta on top. And on the bottom, we have um, square root of secant squared, well, okay, the square root of 1 plus tangent squared theta, because we factored out that 9s. Of course, that is secant squared, square rooted. So we end up with the integral of secant squared theta d theta on top and just secant theta on the bottom. And that gives us the integral of secant theta d theta. And secant theta is a, not a obviously not a derivative of something, so we have to do some finagling. This is, I think we did one like this before in a different video. And this is, again, the one where you say, how would I ever think of doing that? But um, here we go. So what you do is you take secant theta and you multiply top and bottom by secant theta plus tangent theta. Secant theta plus tangent theta. And what it does is it creates a u du situation because you have secant squared theta here plus secant theta tangent theta all over secant theta plus tangent theta. And again, secant squared is the derivative of tangent. Secant tangent is the derivative of secant, so, do you say it here? so then this ends up being just the natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta. Because this is just a du over u type situation. But of course we can't leave it like that, so we're going to have to go down here um, and draw a little triangle. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Theta and since we said at the beginning that theta x is equal to 3x, or 3 tangent theta, that means tangent theta is equal to x over 3. So that means this would be x, and that would be 3. And this would be the square root of 9 plus x squared. So that means we can figure out what, all the, what secant is and tangent is. So the natural log of, of course, secant would be so cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That means secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So that would be the square root of 9 plus x squared over 3 plus um, tangent theta, of course, is just x over 3. So that would be x over 3 and then plus c. Okay, moving on. Um, It's another one that looks tempting to use sub or u sub, but then you square root, of course. I mean, not the square root, but the, they have x squared inside here and x squared out there. So that won't work. So it looks like another job for trig substitution. And this is, um, if we hop over to the trig substitution sheet again real quick, 4 minus x squared. So that means we want, when we want a minus x squared, that's a sign, isn't it? Okay. So. So let's let x equal 2 
sine theta, which means dx is equal to 2 cosine theta d theta. So the integral is going to have an x squared on top, so that would be 4 sine squared theta times dx, which would be 2 cosine theta d theta. And then on the bottom, we're going to have the square root of 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. Okay. And we're probably going to have to draw a triangle on this one, but we'll get to that. Ah, let's go ahead and draw the triangle right now. So the triangle is going to look like this. Theta. And sine is opposite of repotenuse. So that would be x over 2 which means this is going to be the square root of 4 minus x squared. Notice there's that phrase that we look for when we draw the triangle. Okay. Okay, so then um, we have, let me erase that and make that a little shorter. So I'm going to factor out this 4 out of the square root. And it'll become 2 on the outside, so it'll cancel that 2. So then we'll be left with the integral of, whoops, but that 4 will still be there. So I'll throw him outside, and we'll be left with a sine squared theta, cosine theta, d theta on top. And on the bottom, I'm going to have the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. Now we know that 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared. Square root of that is cosine, so these cosines will cancel out, and we're left with 4 times the integral of sine squared theta d theta. So there's another one where we have to use a fancy trig identity. So um, if we use the half angle formula, which I think I again showed this in an earlier video, we can um, translate this to uh, 1 half minus 1 half cosine squared theta d theta. And then we can integrate it. Of course, we can take the 1 halves outside, so that would just be 2 times the square root of 1 minus Oh, whoops, that was wrong. Not cosine squared. It would be cosine 2 theta. There you go. Cosine 2 theta d theta. And then this is totally integratable. <clears throat> so the integral of, one, integral of 1 d theta would be just theta, but then we bring that 2 back in, so that would be 2 theta. And then subtract from that, the integral of cosine 2 theta would be sine 2 theta. And the one half and the two cancel each other. Okay, so let's see, where was I? Oh, two theta minus sine two theta. Now, when you have sine two theta, the derivative of sine two theta is cosine two theta with a two that kicks out from chain rule, so we'll need a little one half right there. But then this two on the outside over here cancels out the one half, so it's just that plus c. But now we've got to replace the thetas. So um, we go back to the triangle. And um, for one thing, theta would be, if we solve for theta with this equation here, we'd end up with arc sine of x over 2. So this is going to be equal to 2 times arc sine of x over 2. <clears throat> and um, sine of 2 theta well we don't have a triangle of 2 theta so we got to convert use a trig identity to change that back to um, this is 2 sine theta cosine theta so then this is going to be 2 times well sine theta is just x over 2, and cosine theta would be 
uh, the square root of that whole thing over 2. So square root of 4 minus x squared. Square root of 4 minus x squared all over 2. Those two cancels out. And I'm finally left with 2 arc sine of x over 2. And that would be um, minus x times the square root of 4 minus x squared all over 2 plus c. <laughs> that was a humdinger. All right, here's another good partial fraction decomposition, it looks like, because I definitely can't, it's not, doesn't look like a trig substitution, and the, the top is definitely not the derivative of the bottom. So, um, let's see, we can factor out a one-half out of that thing, and that leaves me with uh, dx over 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. And then if we factor that again, we get, uh, and we can just leave that one half out, and we'll bring it in at the end. So if we factor that again, we get, um, I'm going to leave the integral aside for a moment and just work the fraction. Let's see, is this factorable? Yeah, that'd be 2x plus 1 and x plus 1. Yep. So if we're going to break that into two fractions, we call this a over... 2x plus 1 plus b over x plus 1 multiplied by the common denominator and we get 1 is equal to a times x plus 1 plus b times 2x plus 1 and then we know that um, that would mean that 0 has to be equal to a plus b nope 0 has to be equal to a plus 2b because of that and that, and 1 has to be equal to a plus b. So according to, based on this equation, we know that um, a is equal to negative 2b. So then if we sub into this equation, we get 1 is equal to negative 2b plus b, which means 1 is equal to negative b, and that means negative 1 is equal to b. And if we put a negative 1 up here, that means a is equal to 2. Okay? So then we can replace that with a 2, and that b with a negative 1, and then I'm going to erase all this to make room to do the integral. Hopefully you followed all that. So then we want to um, integrate that. So we're going to do the integral of 2 over 2x plus 1 plus, nope, minus the integral of 1 over x plus 1, dx and dx. And that's just going to be, well, 2 is the derivative of 2x, so that's actually literally going to just be the natural log of 2x plus 1 minus, and that will just be the natural log of x plus 1 plus c. Okay, this video is getting kind of long, so I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do number nine, um, and then I will finish this up and post the solutions. Um, but at least you'll have a good chunk of video of me working through this. But I wanted to do number nine because people have been having trouble with these type of things. Um, actually, I wonder if there's one involving sine or secant or tangent. Nope. Nope. No. Okay, well, I'll do this one. So sine squared, cosine cubed. So again, the idea here is this is a u-substitution, but it's kind of a specialized u-substitution because we're recognizing that um, sine is the derivative of cosine and cosine is the derivative of sine. So we're just trying to pick a, 
and these what you're going to do is pick a du first and then um, pick your u accordingly so we look at this and anything that's squared so any sine that's squared can be changed to cosine and any cosine that's squared can be changed to sine so we want the du to be the leftovers so since there's one odd since there's an odd power cosine i'm going to let du be cosine that means that u has to be sine right so if u has to be sine then that means we need everything but the one cosine to be switched to sine so that means um, that if u is sine that means oh so that means i'm going to change this to 1 minus sine squared times cosine x, right? Because this would be, the, the parentheses would be cosine squared, and then there would be kick out that extra cosine x. So then I can rewrite this as u squared times 1 minus u squared times du. And that would be u squared minus u to the fourth du and so when I integrate that I get one third u cubed minus one fifth u to the fifth plus c and that of course would be one third um, u was sine right one third sine to the third minus one fifth sine to the fifth plus c I think I'll stop that there, and I'll finish the rest of these and post the solutions.